All right, Doodle on a Motorcycle, you are back on the Driven to Ride podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, you were at Sturgis. I was at Sturgis. We didn't get to meet in person, um, but uh, we both had a heck of an experience. Uh, which number or how many times have you been up there? Uh, this year would make my third year going. Okay. Um, what first motivated you to go to the Sturgis rally anyway? Uh, the first time I went, just the hype around it. I wanted to see what, yeah, what all the hype was about. Why is it such a big deal? Yeah. I mean, and you went solo, correct? Correct. Was there any reasoning behind that? Did you not have anybody who wanted to go with you or was it like, I mean, that sounds like you don't have any friends, which is, is not true. <laughs> I, you know, maybe I don't. <laughs> um, um, I think, I, I think I'm just so used to doing my trip solo because, um, since I'm, I'm, it's, it doesn't work really work for me to do them socially when I'm filming. Uh, I'm just not very present for other people. So I, I do those things. Um, when it comes to making a video, I'll just do them solo. Cause it just, it's just more polite that way, I think. Um, and also so many, not a lot of people have all the time to take as much time off as I have with my road trips. Mm -hmm. Um, some of them are also kind of short notice. Um, and it helps me also just be flexible with the timing and prioritize making the video and making sure the, the video looks good. Cause at the end of the day, that's most important to me, not just me having fun. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, I still got to keep the lights on and, uh, pay myself, pay my editors. Yeah. So it's going it, to, yeah, it's gotta be important that it, the end, the end video is, is good for people to watch. Um, so I, I'd say that's the main reason. Cause I just, I prioritize the video and other people's timing and, um, and also maybe I could invite other content creators, but usually other people have their own plans for what they want to do with their videos. So that can be complicated. So it's just kind of a habit I've gotten into just doing solo trips. Yeah, it makes sense. I did, I did a solo ride to, to Sturgis this year. And I have to say like a solo ride is kind of nice because you can go at your own speed. You can stop whenever you want. You can take as long of breaks as you want. You're not really uh, accountable to anybody else. So there is kind of some nice, there's a nice luxury there to be able to do it all by yourself. So exactly. Although I have you, gotten into, to, to group riding. Sure. Sure. And I think you did a couple of group rides, uh, or you have done some group rides at Sturgis. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, but when you first got into Sturgis or were riding up there for your first time, were you nervous at all? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I got a lot of nervous family members for me going by myself, but no, I wasn't at all. Yeah. Um, cause in the video, I think one of the first videos you posted about, you know, going to Sturgis really was a lot about, um, the stereotypes that, you know, kind of are around Sturgis, but really aren't all that true. Can you kind of talk about your experience that first time? Yeah. So, um, that video where I took hidden cameras to Sturgis, that was basically to address all the concerns that I noticed like my family and friends and generally people who don't ride have about me going on these trips alone. Um, they're all just so w worried for me. Like they're just sure that I'm going to be kidnapped or killed or something. Um, but I, and they just weren't believing me when I'm trying to assure them. I'm like, you know, I've, I'm, I was a self-defense instructor for many years. Like I do a lot of self-awareness, preemptive things to not put myself in a more dangerous situation as much as possible. Um, the motorcycling community is actually very friendly and polite and open. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I, I, um, like when I went to Sturgis solo, uh, it might have been different if I had gone to the bar scenes and the the late night things, but I didn't. I pretty much stuck to the daytime activities and the riding, and I was in bed by like eight o'clock most most <laughs> nights, just so exhausted by the heat and still on East Coast time. Uh, so that was that was the main purpose of of using those hidden cameras to show that what the interactions are actually like, and they're very polite and platonic and. Uh, more, more dad-like, brother-like than anything else. Yeah. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't think that there was going to be any negative experiences, but everybody is just kind of having a good time, hanging out, um, not really looking to cause trouble. At least, you know, my experiences during the day, I didn't really go out to the bar scene much either. Um, but 
there is a pleasant surprise of of friendliness and helpfulness and all that kind of uh, vibes around Sturgis, you know? Yes. Yeah. Which is, I guess, not what other people might expect. I, I don't think a lot of people in or out of the motorcycling community expect that un, until they go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. Uh, is that kind of what made you want to go back a second time? Um, no, I actually probably wouldn't have gone back again, even though it was so fun and the roads were literally some of the most beautiful roads I've ever ridden on. Uh, I'm kind of a one and done kind of person. Mm. Um, but then I found out about the medicine wheel ride and they ride to Sturgis. And I really wanted to make a video highlighting Native Americans somehow. Mm -hmm. And after my cross country trip, it, it just felt strange to, to explore the country and not somehow highlight native Americans, but for sure, I didn't know any natives. So I, I just put out a blurb on my Instagram saying, is anyone native? Can I ask you some questions? <laughs> and there was a uh, one native woman. She's a photographer that answered a lot of my questions. And uh, I was like, can I just come visit you? <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she suggested to do some research. She was like, maybe I can find something that's a little more on brand for you. <laughs> she was like, I don't even ride. I just ride on the back of my husband. Uh, I, I think if I'm remembering correctly, um, and she's the one who found the medicine wheel ride and, and found this group of biker women who ride to Sturgis to raise awareness about, um, about natives and issues their communities are facing. And, and, uh, she's the one who gave me that connection. And that's when I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I guess I'm going to Sturgis again. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like a, a super cool organization, a very important organization, uh, as well. Tell me a little bit about the medicine wheel ride, where they ride from and to what you do at Sturgis kind of give us the rundown. Um, so Sturgis, I would say is their main ride for, uh, raising awareness about these issues, but they do multiple rides throughout the year and mm -hmm. the medicine wheel ride board members and also other riders, they're all around the U S one of the board members lives in Hawaii. Uh, and she keeps a bike here in the U S uh, or here in on the mainland. Mm -hmm. And, um, so this year, as well as last year, um, they started on, in different places. Last year, we started the Sturgis ride in Arizona and this year it started in California. Mm -hmm. And what they've done this year, 2024 is their fifth year, I want to say doing the ride and my second year joining them. Uh, so what they do is they stop at multiple locations. They have these events planned in advance where they'll share their stories. Um, previously, it's been they've been sharing their personal stories and going on rides. Um, and just last year, there was a documentary put out about them. So now they've been showing the documentary. It's like 30 minutes long called We Ride for Her. Okay. By uh, Red Sands Project. And that's, that's basically the, what they kind of, the most public thing I would say they do is writing to raise awareness about the issues. Um, and behind the scenes, the, the, they do a lot. They, um, some of their funds go straight to creating billboards and flyers for missing purpose, missing persons. Cause they just don't have the resources. Um, uh, the attention doesn't go there. Like, uh, like, did you hear about Gabby Petito? Um, she was she was mm -hmm. a YouTuber. She was a uh, a van lifer that when she went missing, I mean, it was like it was everywhere. It was, it was all national over news all the time. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. National news. Everyone knew about it, and um, you know, there she was found shortly after, not alive, unfortunately, but she was found. Like there was just a lot of resources, a lot of people searching for her. And, um, for native communities it, that, that resource and the attention just isn't there. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they don't, they don't get on CNN and Fox news and all the main news outlets and, um, they don't get the large billboards and the, the internet trending videos. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and at the same time, it happens at such a high rate in their communities. Like. I mean, if like 10 of us go on a group ride, non-native people go on a group ride, maybe nobody has, you know, has a family member or a friend that's missing. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of how the medicine started was a group of native ladies going on 
a bike ride or just riding together and realizing that almost all of them had at least one or multiple people in their lives that was missing and no one knows what happened to them or was killed and it's unresolved Mm -hmm. uh, or was missing and then their body found maybe years later and still it's unresolved. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's what they ride to raise awareness for and also provide the search and rescue efforts themselves. Um, and some of them have even helped house actual victims that are trapped in domestic abuse situations, uh, before they become a missing person themselves and Mm -hmm. helping, yeah, just kind of getting in the trenches themselves is, is some of the things that they do as well. Yeah. It sounds like a, you know, critically important cause for, uh, you know, the native community and sounds like it's, it's gaining traction, um, a little bit every year, which is cool. Yeah. I'm just glad to see that it's, um, more and more people are beginning to learn and care. Um, Mm -hmm. so I, I don't think necessarily the issue of why this wasn't, uh, these issues facing natives isn't more known is necessarily that people don't care. I think it's just that people didn't know, um, outside of the native community. So I'm glad to see that there are more people like you, for instance, that hear about it and care. And it's like, what, tell me what is going on. I had no idea this was happening in our country. Tell us, tell me more. Yeah. And I think there's an interesting connection to, you know, the Sturgis and the Black Hills kind of, uh, overall, because, that's kind of a, a, a magical kind of place, a special place, um, especially for not only for bikers, but especially for a lot of uh, natives and native tribes. Um, so it, it it kind of all fits together. It all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 like their their mecca. Um, a lot of tribes see that as um, the center of the universe and like a and the sacred place and. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot more to to the Black Hills too um, that the natives want to to raise awareness about as well. Um, I don't know if you want to get into that today, but um, hopefully I can share about that as well, like just on my platforms and channels and help more people just know because I think that's the main thing is people just don't know. Yeah, I was going to ask when you guys ride to Sturgis, do you do any uh like, you know, raising of awareness at Sturgis? Do you have events at Sturgis? Uh what what do you do once you get there? Yeah, so at least this year and the last year that I was there, um there's a group ride um and and that's pretty open to to the public. Like you don't have to be native, you don't have to be women. I, I think there's a conception that you have to be both those things. But no, it's just start the group was just started by native women. So sure. Who sure. dominated it at first. Um but there's a, a group ride this year it was it started at Bear Butte State Park um and ended in the Dead Law Outlaw the, the Deadwood Outlaw Square. Okay. Yeah. Hosted yeah, by yeah. Harley Davidson. So there was um there was a concert there by an indigenous band and uh, a bunch of items to that you could um, do a silent auction on. And the documentary was screened there as well. So yeah. So at Sturgis, there's, there's, uh, there's some events, there's the group ride. And then, and then there's also um, this year, Harley Davidson donated a street glide to the medicine okay. ride okay. so cool. that uh, we could auction that off or not auction that off. So we could, um, raise funds with the sweepstakes for it. So that was at the Harley booth for people to come and buy tickets. And that's still ongoing. That'll, the, uh, winner will be announced on Christmas Eve. So there's still time to, to donate to that and, and win that bike. Um, yeah. So Sturgis, Sturgis is a big, big spot to, to, uh, celebrate or call attention. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, it, it just one of, you know, the many things that's going on, um, in Sturgis and that whole area. Um, let's talk about the riding a little bit, cause you talked about, uh, you know, some of the best riding and I have to agree with you. It's some of the best riding I've ever done in my life. And I have to tell you when I went, uh, down Iron Mountain Road, I pretty much had like a vision of like a screenshot from, I think your first Sturgis video of like that first, uh, pigtail, I think is that they call mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. into the cave. And I'm like, I've seen this somewhere before and I'm like, I know cool. exactly where I've seen it. Um, 
and there's in between thoughts of like, wow, this is actually really technical writing. Yes. Very uh, technical. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about some of the riding that you've done over the last couple of years. Um, maybe some of your favorite spots uh, riding around Sturgis. Um, definitely Needles Highway. So, so beautiful. Yeah. The structures around there are insane. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Iron Mountain Road, I don't remember as much, but I know I put it in the video, so it must have been good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I remember that the, there's a lot of switchbacks and twisties on Iron Mountain Road. So I think I do now that you mention it, I do remember it being pretty technical and fun that way. Um, but very packed during the rally. So very slow. So if you, if you're one that likes to go, uh, a little bit faster on the twisties, maybe you're used to mountain ridings or, or track riding. Maybe you want to go another time outside of the rally when prices are much, uh, lower too, as everywhere. Um, oh, the Badlands National Park. That's another beautiful spot. Uh, it's very, it's really hot there though. It's extra hot in the Badlands than outside of it because of the, um, the, the landscaping there. Oh, sure. Um, Yeah. So this year and last year was really hot, but, uh, I say still worth the ride. It's just so beautiful. Um, devil's tower is a little bit further outside of, uh, Sturgis, but worth the, I say worth the drive. Um, (laughs) just because it's also beautiful, not technical, but just a beautiful ride through a bunch of like, um, what would you say? Like a bunch of fields and then the Devil's Tower itself is just a stunning place to to walk around as well. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I haven't ridden in Utah though yet, but so far I would say Sturgis is some of the b- most beautiful roads I've ridden in the U.S., yeah, I mean, it's a perfect combination of, like, you're just getting into the West, so everything's a little bit bigger, more expansive, a lot of elevation. Um, it's it's very cool. It's a lot better than the flatlands here of Illinois. Oh, yeah. Oh, you live in Illinois. That's <laughs> not some – that's that's some boring riding over there. <laughs> yeah, there's not much going on. But it was a nice ride from here to Sturgis, so. Oh, yeah. How? Uh, how where uh, in Illinois do you live? Uh, I'm uh, based out of – I'm based outside of Chicago, um, so about 40 miles west of the city. Uh, and once you get out that far, it's just all flat, straight farmland, uh, straight roads until you get to about western Wisconsin, and then it starts to get a little more interesting. But it's a little <laughs> bit of a hike to get over there. So, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. It was it was part of the pilgrimage to get out there, which was uh, which was cool. So, um, what is maybe your favorite part of Sturgis, whether it's, you know, the riding, meeting people, hanging out, the trip itself. Um, the first year I went, when I went solo, I would say definitely the, the riding is just so beautiful. Um, yeah, the, the rally itself is fun with all the booths and the people watching, um, and the stunt shows, uh, but the riding can't be beat. Um, and now that I've gone twice with the medicine will ride, um, probably just hanging out with them, just hanging out with other people, other riders. That's, that's a really fun too. Um, yeah. So maybe the people part of it, but I think if, 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 especially if you're a solo rider or if you don't, if you're not big on the party scene or the booths, you could easily go to Sturgis, not during the rally and probably enjoy the roads even more, uh, and pick it at a time when the weather's a little better. Sometimes at least the, the first and the Thir- this third year that I've gone, it's been really hot, like so hot. You don't even want to put your gear back on to <laughs> get on the bike. Um, oh, although actually South Dakota, you, you can ride without a helmet. So some people take advantage of that, but I don't, I'm like, I need all my gear and my full face helmet. It's yeah. It's, it, it may almost be worth it if you're just there for the roads to go, not during the rally. So you can save a lot on flights and lodging when everything <laughs> is in price gouged and sure, have sure. the roads all to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's unlike any other riding I've done. And, um, and I was on a a Yamaha XSR 900. So I got a little bit more time to flick the bike around and stuff. Have you taken a Harley every single time? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. All three years. Okay. Would you consider taking another bike maybe, or are you just kind of sold on taking a Harley to Sturgis? Uh, no, definitely not, um, stuck on, uh, sold with just Harley, but Harley's just the easiest bikes because they are available all around the U S through Eagle mm-hmm. Rider. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just cannot swing the almost 
two weeks of riding to and from from my home here in Georgia. Um, so I'm, I'm very dependent on what bikes I can pick up and what's available by location that it starts. And uh, since the first Medicine Wheel Ride started in um, – that I joined last mm-hmm. year anyways, started in Arizona, um, Harley was the only thing I could get. Um, and then also drop off in Sturgis. So I, I needed something that I could pick up somewhere in one state and drop off in another. And so far that's just been Harley. Um, other bike manufacturers there, they've got locations on in California and a few in are here local to me near Atlanta. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, that's why I keep going Harley. Well, and they, I mean, they are comfortable and they are yes. great for that, that kind of riding. I mean, just those long sweeping curves. And if you're putting some serious miles on it, I'll tell you after 560 miles, the first day on that XSR 900, it was a challenge to get back on it the next day. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet yeah. that was, that was painful. Yeah. A little yeah, saddle the, sore. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah. The, the Harley baggers are, are great for the, for the long trips. Um, but not so great when I'm riding around seeing the sacred sites with one of the native ladies, including the devil's tower and then we end up going somewhere that's all a very narrow gravel road. And oh, I'm geez. on a road glide. I'm like, Ugh, I don't know if I can do an 18-foot U-turn on gravel on a road glide. And guess what? I didn't. I dropped that bike twice trying to turn around. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I mean, there's I, engine guards, so it was, it was okay. Yeah, I had some crash bars and uh, kind of saved my bacon a little bit, too. I um, had a little hit to my ego. I was I was filling up gas and uh dropped something on the right side bent over to go get it and the bike started going left and just before mm. i knew it yep but i will say somebody was like down like down there helping me get the bike back up as like yeah. before i even knew it was going on and exactly that was i think a really nice not a surprise but it was just nice to have like somebody right there to help you you know complete stranger but the through line is all motorcycles, you know, it's, it's a, you're around so many people that ride motorcycles. There's kind of, is that can, that understated or uh, unwritten connection that everybody I think shares. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Exactly. Um, so do you think you'll go back again? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but probably not by myself. I'd love to join the medicine ride again. (laughs) I'll just keep going until they tell me they don't want me to keep following them. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it sounds like you're uh, you're a welcome uh, uh, welcome part of the club or the uh, the organization. So I'm sure they'll have you for as long as you'll uh, you'll want to go. So yeah, I hope so. I love hanging out with them, and especially just want to keep helping to raise awareness for what they're trying to raise awareness to as well. Yeah, it's an important mission. So Doodle, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it, and uh, thank you. We'll for talk again. Me. All right, talk again. Thank you, Mark.